We are Makilala TV, the first Filipino-American TV talk show in the New York metro area. Get to know us as we talk to the community leaders, innovators, advocates, and emerging artists who affect Filipino-American life. Filipino Americans were once known as the invisible minority, but not anymore. It seems like everywhere we look, Philippines and the Filipinos are making headlines. So what does it take to lead a strong immigrant community that has hundreds of organizations, diverse advocacies, and strong personalities, and to top it all, to be in a city that doesn't sleep? I'm Jen Fuhrer in New York City with Christina D.C. Pastor and Rochelle Ocampo, Makilala TV at Manhattan Neighborhood Network begins right now. So first, let's welcome our guest co-host for today, who challenged all of us to be a part of a bigger movement, the president of Philippine American Friendship Committee, Ms. Letty Almadin. Letty, welcome back to Makilala. Thank you. Thank you for having me here today. Uh, thank you for being here. And um, now, our very special guest, a big supporter who helped launch Makilala TV. First, I have to pause because Without this amazing visionary, I wouldn't be here. In fact, I met him four years ago today. It was the first time I stepped foot at the Philippine Embassy. That meeting gave me and my out-of-status family hope and courage. So let's give a warm welcome to the Philippine Consulate General of New York, Ambassador Mario Lopez de Leon, Jr. Conjen, welcome to Makilala. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for inviting me here. Yeah, it's actually This is my first time here in the studio. Oh, yeah, you're right. It's a big schlep, too. So I think we're glad to be here. So um, to, to start, we have like a little um, quick um, question and answer. Like nothing, nothing really deep like Christina would ask. <laughs> <laughs> Let's say um, in New York, like we have to pick Billy Joel's New York version or Taylor Swift, the song. Oh, I, I don't know either, but uh, Taylor Swift is fine. Or Frank Sinatra's New York. <laughs> okay, when you wake up, let's say in the middle of the night, and you have the munchies, um, and you're craving for food, what's the first thing that you would, you know, what's the first restaurant you would call? Restaurant? Or uh, what food that you're gonna make? Or, oh, yeah. it's always eggs. Always <laughs> eggs, okay. Um, okay, when you hear the word exercise, what comes to mind? Gym. Gym. Right. You go to a gym. Yes, I go. Wow, wow. I didn't know you that. See that. Now you, you know, know. Now the community <laughs> knows. <laughs> okay. We're all going to look for you in our local gym. <laughs> Say, when you're stranded in an island, who would you be happy with? Miss Universe or Miss World? Miss World. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I was, okay. I was thinking he would say Mrs. De Leon. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, going back, so up Conjin, um, how does he feel, how does your family feel about being in the city all this time? Oh, they really love it here. That's, that's one thing I would say. Uh, this is the first time we live in the city, you know, uh, when I was assigned here in New York. Uh, before, 20 years ago, we, we lived in the suburbs, so it was more of a suburban life. But this is the first time we're living in the city, and, I, and I'm starting to enjoy it as well. When you meant uh, suburbs, you mean New Jersey? Yeah, I, ah. we lived in New Jersey ah. before. That was when, during your first yeah, posting. Even there. when uh, we were based in London, we didn't exactly live in central London. It was oh. in the suburbs. How about Letty? What was your first um, interaction with Kanjen? It was actually 2011. The first time I saw him was, uh, it was PAFCOM's event. You gave mm. a speech. Of, uh, it's a coronation mm. uh, event, uh, the, the first time. He's, um, uh, uh, that's the first time I met you, mm -hmm. but uh, the thing that always uh, I have in mind, uh, my encounter with Conjun is all those conversations about the community and his vision and where he wants to see the community in, in the future. Uh, so those are very interesting and engaging conversations. That's the thing that I'm going to take with me. You know? That's interesting. Yeah. You mentioned where Conjun wants to see the community. Yes. So Conjun, where do you want to see the community? 
Well, I, I, I think right, right from day one, I, I, I've always said this, although maybe I said it in different words. First of all, uh, you know, we, we're a big community in the U.S., I know that, and I know for a fact that when I first uh, arrived in New York, and I, I look at the roster of uh, the organization, mm -hmm. there were 400, and I said, my God. Wow, that's a big number. 400 organizations, I mean, how can I meet all of them, yeah. right? <laughs> so, so I said uh, to myself, you know, after being out here for more than 15 years, mm -hmm. going back, uh, I wanted to see how you know, the community evolved. One of the first things that I realized is many of the old faces I saw before, I still saw. Okay, <laughs> so what changed? <laughs> so that's the first question I asked. Yeah, yeah. Then the second uh, thing I, I, I realized about the community is that we still seem to do the same uh, activities. Which I mean, is some are already mainstreaming, which is, of course, the useful dinner dance. The socials. And the socials, the socials are mostly yeah. among ourselves. Uh, we, we don't seem to reach out to other groups. We don't seem to, uh, of course, to engage more with um, the mainstream. I mean, I mean, th those were my first impressions. Mm -hmm. I might have been wrong at that time. But one thing that struck me is when, when I met uh, the second generation group at the time, mm -hmm. because they were one of the first to call on me also. Oh, really? The core was there. Yeah, and yeah. We started talking about um, donating books to the libraries, Filipiniana books. Oh, that's great, I said. Then there was this, this other group, and they started talking about uh, how the second generation would reconnect. It was more, more about reconnection, mm -hmm. talking about their history, asserting their identity. So th those, those were issues that uh, were not the ones I faced 15 years ago when I, oh, I'm talking about 2011, so yeah, that was yeah. 50. It's now, six, uh, I would say, uh, almost 20 years, right, yeah. at that time. So uh, when I first went to PAFCON, that's one of the first things I said, that uh, I want to, to see the community, you know, uh, to be uh, more, I would say, visible. Uh, and I'm talking about the Philippine community, Philippine. more visible in mainstream society. Mm -hmm. And secondly, what I wanted to tell them is, uh, you know, we should celebrate our successes as a community because that's the only way that we can be known. Yeah, right? yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, we are a very uh, talented, professional, uh, you know, we, we, we have uh, Filipino, I mean, not only Filipino, but uh, family values. I mean, we are what you might call the ideal mm -hmm. family in, yeah. in the United States, in the United States. So we have all of these ingredients, so we should be more visible. I mean, I remember in one of your speeches, you said that the Filipino community is now nearly half millennial. And you said that was significant. Yes, you know, um, demographics. Demographically, yeah, right. Demographically, I think the, the community has also changed. I think that accounts for, I think, the attrition that I mentioned, mm -hmm. you know, when I first arrived, there were about 400 community organizations. And when we tried to, uh, to validate and vet all of these organizations, we found out it's only about half. So what happened to the 200 yeah, others? Yeah, yeah. I actually, uh, when I was working with Unipro when they, when they first started, we actually um, were able to try to get through that list and through mailing, through phone numbers, Almost none of them existed. Really Only a handful true. that we yeah. actually were able to connect with. So how many organizations do we have right now? About 200 plus? Uh, that's, that's the max, that's right? That's the max. Uh, I would say it's uh, more than 100. More than 100. Uh, yeah. In fact, you know, when we, we held the, the General Assembly the first time last year, 2015, we, we called on all of the organizations to participate. Of course, some couldn't come because I, I handled 10 states. You, know? you don't expect yeah, Vermont yeah. to, to mm -hmm. join or main for that matter. But we had about 65 organizations represented. So that was That's big. A big I think you were yeah. there. Yes. Yes. You were yeah. there, That's about right. 65. And I think we had about 67 this year when we had the second general assembly. Mm -hmm. So I would safely say that about, maybe they account for about 40 to almost 50% of all existing organizations. That's right, yeah. So safely is uh, about 160 maybe. And there may be a few that uh, we don't know exist. Sometimes they exist, you know, when they start inviting you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's right. Right. So these um, 100 plus organizations, are these across the 10 states that you manage? Yes, they are. Ah, okay. They are these are not just New York, New Jersey. No, okay. Not just New York, New Jersey. Perfect, yeah. That's another thing I did. Um, you know, if I would 
like to really raise the visibility of Filipinos, uh, I might as well be present in all of the states that mm -hmm. uh, are under my jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. Whether the organization is small or big, I attend as long as I have the time. So that's what I did. I mean, it's of course the abot ng kaya. You know, you only have a, a weekend to to spare, mm -hmm. right? Uh, to, to reach out. But I was able to to go as far as the Vermont, uh, New Hampshire, yeah. Erie in Pennsylvania, Pittsburgh, wow. um, of course uh, Niagara. Wow, does it get like tiring to go like to every event every single weekend? <laughs> tiring. <laughs> tiring and fattening. <laughs> I mean, you're right in that. But, uh, it's, it's what keeps me going. Um, well, you know, I, I'll write. I, uh, I'd like to really thank my wife for always joining me. You know. <laughs> she really helps me in, in uh, keeping up with all of this uh, busy schedule that yeah, I have. Right. You know, sometimes I have about three events. Like today, in one, I, in I one have day. two events. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. oh, God. Are there organizations, have you met an organization that has not reached out to the consulate at all? They think they can survive without connecting with you. There are. There are? There are. Do they do that on purpose because they... They yeah. just had a bad experience with the consulate, or, or just are they, they being activist-oriented? They don't want anything to do with the Philippine government? What, what is the reasoning behind that? Yeah, maybe a, a, a lot of reasons, but sometimes uh, what I feel is they don't know anybody in the consulate. You know, we Filipinos, we tend oh. to find uh, a third party to introduce right. us, you mm -hmm, know, mm -hmm. because maybe they feel that, uh, you know, we're so high up there, we cannot mm -hmm. be a, approachable. Mm. That's true, but though. I didn't go true. to the consulate until, like, I... I had you know. Un until you met somebody in I the community. Somebody said, you you should go. That's actually similar to um, the student organizations. When I would go to um, the student organizations in the Filipino uh, community, mm -hmm. um, a lot of them are like, "Oh, you you had an event at the Philippine consulate?" I was like, "Yeah." <laughs> All the time. They think that you're so such a yeah. big shot that you I was are like, happy. no, they are so engaging. Yeah, uh, they right. really want to be, be involved. They just don't know yeah, yeah. what uh, platforms. So, so but, is there a disconnect somewhere? Like they don't know how to? Work? Yeah, they're, they're so in their own little college world. <laughs> yeah, that, that's true. In fact, one of the first things we did, uh, and of course, I, I just like to say that uh, I did it as early as 2012, just um, we came out with this idea of be connected, right? So we started uh, using Facebook, Twitter, um, really bump uh, our our website uh, mm -hmm. to make it more attractive. Mm -hmm. But that was not enough, you know? Yeah, it's not, yeah. One thing I realized is you should have more friends. So, you know, <laughs> <laughs> so what I, I did friends. is I made use of my own personal Facebook page wow. a lot. Yeah. So if people, even if I don't know them, if they say that they want to befriend me as long as... You just as accept them. I accept uh, most of the time. Most of the time. That's, that's what I did. So I think I, I have almost about 2,000 friends wow. already. Wow. So whenever Way I... Way to brag. I, yeah. <laughs> no, 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 I'm not yeah, bragging no, no, no. It's I'm just, just that uh, I can, wanted to say you that... You can uh, now endorse a product, you know. Yeah. So when, whenever I, I come up with an announcement there, it reaches many people. It yeah. does. No, but yeah. you And you're more approachable. You became too famous. Someone uh, tried to... Yeah. To Someone... Uh, yeah. Created yeah. an account hot, with your right. name. You were hot, yeah. They yeah. created That's when you know you got it. They cloned you. Right? They cloned you. They cloned me. Yeah, that's true. But uh, did you ever get to the bottom of that? Did you find out who did that? Yeah, someone did. Uh, it was oh, somebody good. from. No, you, you'll be surprised. It was somebody How did from, that from the Philippines. No, why, from why the did Philippines. he do that? The Philippines. And why? Why would he do that? Do you know who, exactly who the person is? Because he wanted to have two thousand plus friends. <laughs> I know he wants to be like Andre. No, no, it was uh, supposed to be. Uh, is it a malicious act? Yeah, yeah it is. Yeah, wow. trying to, to solicit funds from abroad. Oh, oh my gosh, oh, yeah. it's a lot name. more serious. Yeah. 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 Watch out. Make sure you double check. Yeah, that, that's that. why I, I'm a little careful now. I change uh, my password every now and yeah. then. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. But yeah. but when I would say uh, Facebook has done a lot. In in fact, um, even classmates I haven't met in yeah. 40 <laughs> years. <laughs> you know, I first saw them, of course, because of Facebook. That's you know? true. Yeah, Facebook has a lot of pros and, you know, positive things in it. I mean, and it's Conjure, all up to you. And Conjun is kind of active, you know, you would find the time to like every now and then. Yeah. Like, you know, why I, would Conjun like it? Why would <laughs> Conjun bring me a happy birthday? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thank you so much. That's yeah. the least I can do for them, you know? <laughs> um, yeah. if, what, we have so many initiatives. Um, we have the Build a, proje build a Project Shelter. Build a Shelter, build a shelter. shelter yeah. Project. Um, we have the Warden System. Uh, what is your like favorite? If you say favorite, it's like your you take like pride that you started it. 
I don't have really a favorite, but uh, let, let me go to the warden system. I, I started the warden system because the, I, I tried to look at the Filipino communities in my 10 state jurisdiction in a very different way. I tend to look to them more in terms of where do they converge? I mean, more in a se social setting. Like, you know, uh, the community in Bronx and in Greenwich, Connecticut, and maybe Westchester, they tend to congregate more among themselves mm -hmm. rather than deal with New, with New York right. City uh -huh. or Manhattan. Well, it's for convenience. Yes. It's because yeah. proximity, yeah. right? Yeah. I mean, if you're proximate to each other, you, you yeah, tend yeah. to congregate among each other, right? Mm -hmm. Just the same with the Long Island, uh, Nassau, and Suffolk County. I thought I was the only Filipino yeah. in Long Island. Yeah. <laughs> and then yes, I, sometimes. And then I found out about the warning right? system. I was yeah. like, there's you other are Filipinos. The only, you're the only Filipino in Long Island who comes to Manhattan. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I look at it that way. And one thing, I, this is something very surprising. Vermont, you know, I thought that they would tend to congregate more with New Hampshire. No. They tend to congregate more with upstate New York. Why? Uh -huh. Why? Because there is a lake, Lake Champlain, uh, oh, it's which so is beautiful. not, not yeah. so well known among Filipinos. Yeah, you that's know, you beautiful. can take the ferry and right. cross from Vermont to upstate every... New York. And they, there tend to be a lot of interaction uh, uh, of Filipino communities oh. there, which we don't know, not unless yeah. I went there. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So, so, so what I'm saying so is we tend to congregate based on proximity. Yeah and what I call geographic. That's why I found the warden system really, uh, I think, a very effective tool. Mm -hmm. In fact, uh, I dealt with some of the, the political advocacy and social advocacy groups. I told them that's the way to reach out to the community. You don't do it by states, you know. Sometimes mm -hmm. we, we, we tend to do it by states, yeah, simply because I'm from New Jersey. Mm -hmm. In fact, even New Jersey. Southern New Jersey and Philadelphia, they tend to come. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's right. and the ones from Philadelphia, most likely they won't uh, deal so much with the Harrisburg Filipinos or the Pittsburgh Filipinos. Now, one thing I also realized about Pittsburgh, simply because my jurisdiction ends in Pennsylvania, they tend to deal more with Cleveland, which is in Ohio, mm -hmm. because it's only about two hours yeah, away, yeah. right? But that's out of your jurisdiction. It's out right? of my jurisdiction. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, with the warden system, the build a shelter, the, um, I wanted to actually uh, ask you more about second gen and your experiences with, your new experiences with the second gen and how you've been able to engage with them because it's so hard to tap into that population. Yeah, it's so hard. Uh, <laughs> number one, it, it, it's so hard sim Sorry. Sim simply because, <laughs> simply because the, we wanted to really target uh, the young professionals. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, this is something that we discussed with uh, Ambassador Quisha and all the other consuls general. We felt that we, we needed uh, a nationwide program and thanks to Ambassador Quisha and Mrs. Quisha, they were the ones who started PhilPro. Mm -hmm. You're part of it, right? So we did the selection process, 10 of them, because that's what the budget can only bear <laughs> <laughs> across the U.S., including Guam, right? Yes. So uh, we already have about 40 alumni. Yeah. So yeah. We expect them to be the ones who continue the tradition. Mm -hmm. I think you're part of it and to have legacy projects. So that was uh, one way of really reaching out in a big way with, with the young prof. Now, when it came to uh, those who are in college, it was a little easier because you have fine, right? Yes, Filipino Interclusion so Network. That's, yeah, that's, that's yeah, what that's we did. Right. So uh, we participated in fine in Drexel University, in Harvard. You know, that, that's, that's what I did. I, I spoke there. I mean, just to tell them that, you know, uh, we have activities in the consulate uh, where they, if they are interested, they could join. Mm -hmm. Another thing we did is we participated uh, in some of their events like Battle of the Barrios. Mm -hmm. And at the same time- And you time, also had the leadership seminar. Right. Management uh, I, I'll seminar. be going to that. We, we don't have okay, we too don't much have time. time. <laughs> 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 time flies. Oh, all days. God. I know. Yeah, my okay. candle ready. It's already time. <laughs> time to wish you all the best. Oh my God, we could have extended this another like hour <laughs> or so. Part two. Um, part two, like um, we're really gonna miss you in all yes. the all the things that you do for us and any any final words yes. parting words for the community well one thing i want to say is uh, i'm really very proud of uh, the community here uh, they've been very cooperative uh, they've been very open to to most of my initiatives because one of my approaches always to to try to um, solidify them more through activities that i think they really believe in mm -hmm. right so it was more through activities rather than through organizations. That's I mean, true. Yeah. That's, that's how I, I really strongly felt about mm -hmm. it. If we uh, 
go together, work together yeah. in one activity, which we all believe in, then I think we will be more visible as a community. That's true. Yeah. I agree. How about you, Ladi? Want to say? Well, they're only gonna miss you. I <laughs> learned so much with listening all your speeches, and uh, the one thing that I learned is the, you know, make our community visible to the mainstream, connecting our community to the mainstream. Uh, being visible, we gain respect. Once we gain respect, then they start listening to us. That's one thing that. You know, I, and I use that for, you know, whatever I do. I feel like I seeing do. Aretha Franklin, R-E-S-P-C-T. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank Just you so much. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, Kanja. Okay, thank you. Thank, thank you, you so much thanks for, for giving uh, Thanks for coming time. down to MNN for, yes. yeah, thank for you. Lucky Lala show. And um, I wish I could ask you, what's your dream job? Um, what's if next? If we have time, what's yeah. next? What's, what's next, next for you, Kanja? Yeah. Like in 10 seconds? Well, what's next is, of course, I'll have to go back to Manila. I don't mm -hmm. know what position they will still give to me. Unfortunately, I'm going back at a time where there will be a change in administration. Uh, that's right. I don't even know who the next Secretary of Foreign Affairs is, so I'll just take it when I arrive there. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah that's right. Mm -hmm. And that will be another two years, right? Or another four years? Uh, just one year, because one year. I'll be retiring already by 2017. Oh. Now, um. if they decide to give me another position, which can be uh, regardless of your age, in, I mean, a political position. Yeah, oh, like so uh, again, ambassador to yeah. Washington. All right. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, we reached the max. Uh, we wish you the best, and we'll sure miss you, Kanjan. Yes. And we have a little surprise. Thank you so much for gracing our show. And by the way, um, we found out from a very good source that you have a favorite song. So we searched the pool of, <laughs> of talented act, um, artists, and we have Annalisa. Um, and Jerome, they're both performing at Kula Desma's concert on March 1. Mm -hmm. They ah. both have great stories. Mm -hmm. Annalisa came here with $100 in her pocket, and now she's like a doctorate in, you know, in, wow. in physical therapy and into health and fitness, which is like me, but I don't know how to sing, so that's where we separate. <laughs> and Jerome, who's been singing since she was, he was 12 years old, the last along guys. So here to sing Endless Love. Take it away, Annalise. <laughs> My love, there's only you in my life. The only thing that's right. My first love, your every breath that I take. Your every step I make And I, I I want to share All my love with you No one else will do They tell me how much you care Oh yes, you will always be My endless love Two hearts Two hearts that beat as one Our lives have just begun Forever I hold you close in my arms I can't resist your charms Thank you.
is no one can deny this love I have inside. I'll give it all to you, my love, my love, my love, my endless love. Thank you so much. We would like to invite you to watch Kulidesma here in New York this May 1st at 7 p.m. in Sheraton LaGuardia Grand Ballroom um, in Flushing, New York. See you there. <laughs>